Hey folks, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician. And today I've got a great tutorial on how to use Reason's brand new player, Chord Sequencer. I've got some demos for you. And then I'm gonna show you at the end how to use Chord Sequencer in another DAW in case Reason isn't your primary DAW. So please stay tuned for all of that. This is a brand new standalone player from Reason Studios. But if you've got Reason Plus as a subscription, it just automatically gets added to your account. I will include an affiliate link down below if you wanna pick this up, either as part of Reason Plus to demo it, or if you just wanna buy it on its own. So let's just take a quick listen to it and then we'll talk about what it does. So let's start out by just kinda of listening to this cool poly chord groove. So you already see, I mean, that is just coming up with this chord sequence. And we'll talk about how you do it all in a bit. But I just want to kind of build this demo for you and show you some of the things it can do. So then we can go over here, for example, and add the same chord progression, but tie it to the dual arpeggio player and get kind of a cool melodic lead playing the same chord. <laughs> Pretty cool, uh, but it gets cooler, right? Because we could also layer it with like the baseline generator plugin. And again, we have first the chord sequencer, which is telling what the root notes are and sort of what the notes that should be triggered by the arpeggiator or the baseline player. And then it's being filtered through these other players. So let's add the bass. <laughs> Pretty rad, right? But it doesn't even end there. Because really, you can also use it on drums. And I got this really weird kind of cool drum groove. I'm sure there's a million other ways you could use it. But um, I've got it running through um, a dual arpeggiator just to kind of keep it in the right key range and then running into a Kong. The only thing I'll say is I've got a matrix sequencer. I've used it on the back here, the gate in to keep a little four on the four groove. But let's check these drums out and see how this all sounds together. Pretty cool, right? I mean, that's a good start for a song. I could certainly, I think, you know, come up with a better melody, a better bass line, a better drum beat. But as a starter, this is all pretty cool, pretty easy. And the chord progressions itself is really what this is all about. I just wanted to show you how there's just layered complexity here. So let's actually look at what's going on beneath the hood with this chord sequencer. Uh, the first thing I want to say, though, is if you've ever used a Reason player, what you're going to love about this is it's essentially using the same architecture, the same language as all of the Reason players. And so it's really quick to get up and running and learn how it works, to figure out how it works, to start experimenting on your own. Uh, because you've seen all of this before, because it's kind of like, you know, the drum sequencer or the arpeggio, dual arpeggio or whatever. Um, so in the middle is where all the sausage gets made. You've got all these different chords here. And basically... You have here the chord sets to choose from, and you've got all sorts, like we could do Summer Breeze, sure. And you can change the key over here. And so, I'm not using a keyboard right now, but. And you can click on the ones you want, or you can trigger them with the keyboard. And these are all sort of set up to be, you know, <laughs> chords that complement each other. You'll notice that they change color. And the brighter they are, the more reason thinks that they are like the good next chord, that they're in the same key as opposed to like being some sort of passing tone. 
So like if I hit the C major, right, C major seven here. And then I hit the F major six or F major nine, and it goes to a whole other set of chords that work well. But then if I were like, let's say I hit the, the G 11 now. Sounds great. But if I hit the E flat seven sharp 11, well, that was blacked out for a reason. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. Just you gotta go out of your way. So it kind of helps you guess if you don't know anything about what you're doing. Like light green definitely works. Dark green probably works. You're just going somewhere. They're kind of variations of the same chord or something. And then these like kind of, I don't know, teal chords are, I don't really know what they are, to be honest. Uh, but stick to the green if you really want it to work most of the time. Um, then you've also got the ability to add your own chords or to kind of change what the chord is using the edit learn chord section. You can also kind of do external triggering of the chords. You have the ability, let me go down here actually. This is where a lot of the magic is. There's a sequencer here, a chord sequencer, which you'll see. And so you can record your own sequence, you can clear it, you can drag any of these chords down. We can just clear this out. Um, and so you can drag any of the chords down right now. Um, you can, like, so I could take the C major seven here and I can make it last longer. You've also got the snap length or the grid size here. And you can choose how many bars it is, like, you know, is it just a four bar thing? So we could go. And quickly we've cre created probably a much more advanced chord progression than I would come up with on my own with these 11ths and add 13ths. Um, then you can add a little shuffle shuff. Sounds pretty good, right? You've got the ability to choose which octave it's playing in. That's pretty straightforward. Um, if you're triggering this, because uh, this is all mapped to a keyboard, all of these, um, you can have it so that the MIDI velocity that you're using to hit the trigger notes, how much that affects the velocity of the core notes that are being triggered. You can also just have them at play at fixed velocities. You've got the humanize section here, which is gonna kind of add a little variation to the velocity and timing. You have the ability to remove bass either below a certain threshold. So you can say basically, hey, I don't want any low end. So any notes that are being played below E3, don't trigger them. And then you also have the option of adding the root note to the bottom or the top or both. So. You can, as I said, you can choose the amount of bars are in the progression. So you've got four slots here up to, I guess, 16 bar progressions. And you can always just drag one pattern over if you want to use that as the starting place. You also have the ability to use up to eight different patterns on here. And you can copy the chords between patterns, and cetera, and cetera. So this is a super cool plugin. This is really, really a nice chord sequencer. I think it's super intuitive and appropriate for the reason architecture and language. It's not quite as complex, I'd say, as like scales and key, I mean, not quite as complex as Scalar 2 or Captain Chords, but I think it's a really, I don't know that it needs to be, right? I think this 
works really well in Reason, especially in the context of having something like scales and chords, having something like the arpeggiators and things like that. You kind of start putting them all together, and it's a fun, interesting, and really cool take on the whole process. There's also a bunch of different chord progressions put together uh, as patches, as song starters, which is really cool. Um, so I would totally recommend checking out the demo of it with Reason Plus. I think you can get Reason Plus for like a dollar or something to check it out. Um, I don't know if it's worth the full price to buy. As I've long been saying, I think basically they're making, they're basically doing pricing with Reason now to the point where you're pretty much an idiot if you want to buy it outright. I mean, I'm not saying that, but like the pricing makes it so that, oh, here's a cool $99 thing. Here's a cool $99 thing. We're not going to include it in the base version of Reason, which costs $600. Uh, but if you want to spend 20 bucks a month with us, hey, you get everything. Um, and this is just another great example of that. Like, this is cool. It's great. It's usable. And it really integrates well with everything. Uh, stick to, Stay tuned. Now we're going to see how it works inside of another DAW. And the cool thing is that it also works really well if you're using Reason as a plugin. So I've got Logic up here and I've got the Retro Synth, which is just one of the stock synths that comes with it. I'll just show you really quickly how you can use this great new plugin as a MIDI effect in other DAWs. So you go down to Audio Units, Reason Studios, Reason Rack Plugin, bada boom, bada bing. It takes a second to load because I'm on an M1 Mac. This is all gonna be just a little slower and clunkier than we'd like. But um, most DAWs have this MIDI effects slot. And so you'd go in there and basically you can just straight up add a player. And yeah, you could have it control another Reason device if you wanted. But by default, what this is going to do is actually control the retro synth in Logic. So let's look at that. We've got them both open here. And now if I were just to hit play or run. So you see, you can use this to really easily control any DAW. This is a really powerful plugin. One thing I will note is unlike some of the other Reason devices, this does not have an ability to easily just drag the MIDI onto the timeline. So if you want to get your patterns, your chord progressions that you are sending from the chord sequencer onto your sequencer, you're going to need to use a additional plugin. This is the um, MIDI effects freeze. It is a free plugin. It's great. Basically what it does is it will, it's kind of like a, like a notepad for your MIDI. So it'll copy what you are playing, what's coming through the reason rack plugin. And then it'll give you the opportunity to drop it into your timeline. And you'll probably need this for most DAWs. So what you're going to notice is now that this is active, we're not going to hear the MIDI playing back because it's kind of all going through this. So what we want to do is just hit the record button to arm it. And then if we hit play, and we'll just let it go through the full four bar phrase. Then we hit stop. And now that you notice this MIDI icon now has shown up, we drag it onto the sequencer. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh, we don't need it to loop over. We record it a little more than necessary. And now if we turn this off and hit play, we can also turn off the Reason Rack plugin now. So this is just what's coming from the, re the Logic sequencer into the Logic synth. Reason is no longer involved. So, yeah, don't sleep on this.